So welcome back to part two of our baked apple cider donuts from the New York Times. We already discussed having our mise en place all set up here, which is our prep work done in advance, done in, excuse me, our prep work done in advance. Having everything we need already measured out, correct proportions. We triple checked it against the recipe. If I was working with a partner, we would work together to triple check and quadruple check to make sure we're not forgetting anything, okay? If you're missing one of these items, the recipe will not work, guaranteed. Okay, we're gonna be mixing this in a KitchenAid mixer. I'm here in my basement kitchen. Um, so we're gonna be working in the KitchenAid mixer. I'm gonna lower this down a little bit so we can see what's happening here. And we'll talk a little bit about the KitchenAid and how this is gonna work. Um, not the best of backdrops here, but you get the idea of what's going on. We're making do. And we'll lift this up a little bit like that. And we have our KitchenAid mixer, which the power is on the side. We have our paddle attachment, which looks like a paddle in an oar. So now just reading our recipe along, following everything down is uh, how we're gonna make this come to life, okay? Step one tells me in a large bowl, we're gonna add the flour, baking powder, salt, and cinnamon. And we're gonna stir to combine for 10 seconds. I'm gonna use this mise en place container as our large bowl for our, those ingredients, okay? We're gonna get that set right here. So I got my flour already. We're gonna add our baking powder, tapping it out, sweeping my hand through, making sure we get all the baking powder out of that. We got our um, salt, kosher salt, same thing, making sure we get everything out of there. So far we got our flour, our baking soda, uh, excuse me, our baking powder and our salt. Those ingredients are there. And it also tells me that we need to add our cinnamon. Okay, same thing, pay good money for ingredients. You don't wanna leave anything behind, okay? A good little tool that I'm gonna use is my rubber spatula to combine this, all right? We just wanna make sure that everywhere in this container, in this bowl, in this prep cup, it will be baking powder, salt, flour, and cinnamon dispersed evenly, all right? Could even use the handle of this to prevent from splashing out, which sometimes dry ingredients have a tendency to do. You'll see me give it a little shake occasionally. You'll see me make sure that this is a pretty good mixture of ingredients. All right, flour, we used all purpose flour. We used our kosher salt. We got our baking powder in here. We got our cinnamon. It's not rocket science, but it's integral that you do not miss this step, nor do you skip this step. All right, recipes are written to be followed, all right? So we have to follow that right along. Step two, on a mixer with the paddle attachment, we're going to cream butter, brown sugar, and granulated sugar until light and fluffy, three or four minutes. We're gonna use the paddle attachment, which is already set up in our mixer here, okay? Creaming is a technique that is done to properly mix ingredients together in the bake shop, all right? We got our sugar and our granulated sugar. We got our butter. We have to open this package of butter up. And I'm gonna use my rubber spatula to help it along. See that right there? You scrape all of that in. You do not leave that behind. Butter is very expensive. You wanna make sure you get every last ounce of that butter. Call it cheap. I don't care. If that's cheap, then I'm cheap. That is actually making sure you're doing things correctly. That's what that is, okay? Um, now, our mise en place for this part of the recipe is in the mixer. We're gonna raise the mixer arm. We're gonna put it on, as it says, creaming. The creaming method is when you take a soft fat, in this case butter, you mix it together with sugar or sugars in this case. And you're gonna mix that around until it's light and fluffy, three or four minutes. I'm gonna bring it up right now, I'm gonna speed about four. I'm gonna let that mix for a couple minutes. I'm gonna scrape down the sides of the bowl using my rubber spatula. I'm gonna get in there and scrape down the sides to make sure you can see the stuff stuck over there. There's some butter in that corner. Um, I'm gonna get all that in there. All right, I'm gonna go for another 20, 30 seconds. Shut the mixer down, I lower the bowl, get in here with my rubber spatula, release stuff off the paddle, get underneath 
where it goes. Sometimes you got to take this off. It just twists. We'll talk about mixer preparation in another episode. You come in, you get everything off the spatula, back into the bowl. All right. We're looking close to light and fluffy. All right. It looks like there were no, now that's one giant homogenous ingredient. It's not a mixture of three ingredients. All right. Light and fluffy, I'm going to say like another minute. Not even. that again scrape it down one more time you'll see that i'm probably gonna have to scrape this bowl down and the paddle clean things off maybe even three or four times and you can use the power of the machine to move the paddle around all right the rest of this stuff will get mixed in as we go along with the recipe so you don't have to sweat too much about uh having stuff on the paddle okay now that is creaming the creaming method is a mixing of a soft fat, in this case butter, with sugars. Next step on the recipe, it tells us, add the eggs to mix it one at a time. Mix well after each egg is added. Add vanilla extract, mix for 10 seconds, speed one. Well, in our mise en place setup, we already have that done. We have our egg and vanilla combined, okay? <clears throat> We're going to take this, make sure my mix is set up. We're going to set the tripod back down here. Because this part now can all be done via seeing from the ground up. I'm going to raise the tripod up a second here. The joy of cooking kind of live. And we're going to get this a little higher so you can see into the mixer bowl. All right, so a little bit better of a view for you to see. I'll bring that mixer forward just a smidge more. And now we're looking down. It's going to be pretty good. So adding the egg one at a time, being safe, shutting the mixer off, bringing the mise en place cup over, just trying to pour out one egg, catching the drip when it's done. If you get a little more than one egg, it's not the end of the world. See all that albumin? That's what the egg white is called. You need that in the recipe, all right? You don't want to just let it, go down the side that's that's volume that's that's part of your your actual donut so that has to be in there you need to make sure you kind of swirl it back into the cup or if you got two eggs if two eggs fell in two eggs fell in you know what not the end of the world we're going to mix it probably speed three get it whirled around in here all right as you get better with time some things need the mixer running to get properly mixed and I am as high as the top of the mixer here with the cup away from the paddle and I'm going to just carefully pour in from a very high angle the rest of that egg. Now look, this despite all of our culinary arts current students, juniors and seniors, most kids think this is clean, this is done. All right, I can send that to the dish station. I can put that in the sink to be washed. Guess what? That's not done. That's vanilla and that's egg in there. And I paid for that. And I need that in there to make this recipe correctly. I'm gonna shut the mixer down. I'm gonna take my rubber spatula. I'm gonna get inside this cup and add the rest of that vanilla flavoring and any egg that is in there into the recipe. We will send the dishes back to you if we find dishes like that in the dish station. In fact, most times I have you keep your dishes in front of you so I can verify that you've scraped everything out of it. Ingredients cost money. It's your bakery one day. It's your kitchen one day. It's your restaurant, cafe, whatever, one day. You're going to be paying for that. If your workers did that, you would be all over them because that's food costs going down the drain. Okay? And that is a clean cup. All right? There's even a little bit more on the side there. Try to get it all off. Okay? So, next up. Raising the bowl, gonna add that it back in a little bit. Let that mix for about 10 seconds. It looks curdled, it looks like it's separating a little bit, but that's exactly what this recipe is supposed to look like. Okay, next up, we're on step four. 
With the mixer off, we're gonna add all the dry ingredients. Mix SP1, speed one on the mixer for 10 to 20 seconds until incorporated. Some recipes tell you to add half the dry ingredients. Some recipes tell you to use it, do it three times. This recipe instructs me to add all of the dry ingredients. Every recipe is a little different and you have to pay attention to those little idiosyncrasies and little differences in between each recipe, okay? Dry ingredients, gone. Into the mixer. Speed one. Why speed one? Because you don't want a cloud of all your dry ingredients to come out of the mixer. You want everything in there. It tells me that it's gonna mix speed one for about 10 to 20 seconds. This is an indicator. Speed one for sure. We're not going any higher. 10 to 20 seconds, that might take 30 seconds. We just need that mixed in. And then guess what I'm gonna do? It's mixed in. All right, maybe 20 seconds, maybe 30, but we're gonna scrape the bowl down now. We have a lot of dry ingredients on the side, a lot of flour, a lot of that baking so uh, excuse me, baking powder, a lot of that salt. We wanna make sure it's in there, okay? We still have one other ingredient to add. We're gonna move that paddle over, scrape it down the side of the bowl. This is what, the third time I've scraped the bowl for this recipe. Okay, now we have that done. We come back up, we set the bowl back up, and the last part of our recipe is telling us that we're gonna add apple cider in one steady, it should say one steady stream, so there's a typo I have to fix, and mix, speed one, 10 to 20 seconds, until the batter is homogenous. Homogenous means that the batter is perfectly combined and well mixed. It is together in one steady stream. Again, I'm as even as the mixer, the top of the mixer. I don't wanna be down here. You never pour from here unless I tell you to do it or you see me do it and I explain why. The reason is I don't wanna hit the paddle and send this flying in a different direction and spilling. So I'm gonna pour away from the paddle in one steady stream. And this is apple cider from right up the street from my house here in one of the orchards. It's apple cider season, it's apple picking season. So I'm gonna go one speed higher, now that's speed two. I'm gonna mix that around so it's homogenous. And that looks homogenous to me. What do you guys think? I think so. All right, I'm gonna scrape the bowl down again. We're gonna take the paddle out of here because we are done. Now we have to get this into a pastry bag, get this into our prepared pans, which I'm gonna show you and get these baking for donuts, because I'm hungry. I don't know about you guys. We're about 30 minutes away from actually eating donuts at this point, give or take. All right, about 15, 20 minutes of baking, a couple of minutes of cooling, and then going from there. This smells unbelievable. Apple cider has just an amazing scent that this just smells amazing. Using my rubber scraper to get everything off of the paddle that's part of your recipe yield. The yield of the recipe is the amount that it's gonna make. If I left a bunch of goop on this and brought this over to the dish station, I'd be sure to get yelled at by my chef. All right, sometimes your hands are your best tool to get things clean. As long as their hands are clean to begin with. All right, I'm saying that's looking pretty darn good. Pretty clean spatula. Not gonna nitpick it, but that looks pretty good. Got just about everything off of that. All right. Then, now we're ready to make this into donuts, which would be the next step. 